hey guys welcome back so today i'll be telling you a very simple way on how to remember the brachial plexus so the brachial plexus is basically a plexus of nerves or a group of nerves and an easier to remember it is that nerve that comes out of the brain this is the brain this is the spinal cord nerve that comes out of the brain we call them cranial nerves and nerve that comes from the spinal cord we call them spinal nerves so the nerve that comes from C5 at the level of C5 to T1, we call those nerves that makes a plexus the brachial plexus. So they're at the level of C5 to T1. So remember that. So we can just draw that on our diagram right here. Good. So we have that right there. So remember the brachial plexus is from C5 to T1. So an easy way to remember it is that I'm going to use an analogy. Let me see. Yeah, let me just call it an analogy. So this is basically your lectures. So let me just put an L there. Let's just say C7 is the residence. So after they graduate and do internship, they become the residents. And C8 and T1, let's just say they're medical students. Okay. So you know, lecturers, they're always talking to each other. So they're basically friends. So they'll do things together. So we have a thing like that. The residents, however, they don't have much friends since they might be in a single program or they're doing it by themselves. So they travel by themselves. And the medical students, they're always sticking together because you know everybody wants to pass. So they will go together as well. Right. So another thing now is how they travel. So the cranial nerve number five and six, which are the lecturers, they will travel together like this. So we draw a line like that. The residents, they still want to continue by themselves. And C8, T1, which is the medical students, they're going to help each other and travel together as well. So the next thing we're going to find out is is who helps who so the lecturer the lecturers feels very sorry for the residents and so they would give them some help so they give them a branch there the medical students are sucking up to the residents so they're going to give them help in hand as well and guess what the residents are like hmm who can i benefit from more I think I'll benefit more from the lecturers or the program directors. So let me give them some help. So the resident themselves give the lecturers a help or the program director, program directors help and give them a branch. Right. So as it continues, it gets easier. So from here, we'll get two branches like this. And from these ones, we just will get three branches like this. right this marker is going right so here where you see those two branches we get auxiliary nerve and radial nerve and here we basically get the muscular cutaneous nerve The middle one, we call it the median nerve, and the lower one is the ulnar nerve. So, okay, so we got all of this so far, so let's just label the different segments. So here, we call these from here to here, we call them roots. Right? You guys seen that? Right, so that's roots. So from here, like here to here, we call those 
I hate curly brackets. We call those trunks. And here, where we have our branches there, that's the divisions. Let me use another color. We call these divisions. And here, between here, basically here, we get cords. And basically where you see your axillary, radial, muscular, cutaneous, median, and ulna, we call those branches. So to remember my branches, I use a really corny thing. It's M. A R M U. So I just say to remember all my branches, I just use this abbreviation Marmu. So you can use that to remember your branches. And to remember the different segment roots, trunks, division, cords, and branches, I just use Robin Thick Drinks Cold Bear. Robin Thick Drinks Cold Bear. And that's how I remember the different sections and Marmu for the branches. Right, to so just label the segments. So we have these three lines. So if the one at, if you're naming the one at the top, you would call it the upper trunk. So we're naming the trunks. So this is the upper trunk. This is the middle trunk, as expected. And this is the lower trunk. Right? That is very easy to follow. And another thing we can label is... So is the cord. So we're going to label our cord. So the top one is the lateral cord. The second one is the posterior cord. So right here you can see that the posterior cord is what gives your axillary and your radial nerves. So that's not very hard to understand there. And the bottom one is your medial cords. Or your medial cord. Right. So... Now that we have an appreciation of the brachial plexus, we can now basically talk about the different nerves that are given off at different places. So let's start with the cords. So I try to remember the cord by the nerve that given off by one, three, and three. So we have one nerve given off here. We have three given off here. One, two, three, and then three given off here just the same. So we call it one, three, three for the card. So the one that is given out off at the lateral card is the lateral pectoral nerve. So that's not very hard. Lateral cord, lateral pectoral nerve is given off. The posterior cord will give off the subscapula so we give off the subscapular nerves so we have an inferior subscapular nerve and then we have a superior subscapular nerve and we have a middle subscapular nerve and the middle one we call it the thoracodorsal thoracodorsal nerve that supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle and the medial one so this is not very hard to remember either is all of them begins with the letter M so medial M so here the first M is medial pectoral nerve here we have the lateral pectoral nerve here we have the medial pectoral nerve get, give it, getting coming from the medial Cord. Then we have the medial brachial cutaneous nerve. Then we have the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. So again, one, three, three. Lateral pectoral, the subscapular nerves from posterior, and from the medial, we have the three M's medial pectoral, medial brachial cutaneous, and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. So now we're going to jump to our trunks. So from our upper trunk, so from our upper trunk, we have two. We have suprascapula. Not subscapula, but suprascapula. 
and down here we have the subclavian. The subclavian nerve you know to apply in the subclavius muscle, right? And the last thing is here. So our roots. So from C5, we get the dorsal scapula nerve. And then the last one we're going to get, it comes from C5, C6, and C7. So C6 is coming from C5. It's basically, let's put it here. So let's put it here. Let me use a bigger marker like this. So C5, C6, and C7. So it's basically distal to the dorsal scapular nerve. And it basically, it basically gets some branches from C6 or some help from C6 and C7. Basically. And that is the long thoracic nerve. We call that the long thoracic nerve nerve of bell so the long thoracic nerve of bell is what supplies the serratus anterior the muscle serratus anterior and if you have a problem with this nerve you can have a wing scapula so this nerve will give you a wing scapula if there's so something wrong with it and it comes from c5 c6 and c7 root so this is basically the brachial plexus for you guys and if you have any more questions don't forget to drop them in the comment sections below and the best way to remember your brachial plexus guys is to basically draw it yourself over and over again so thank you so much for listening and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe thank you guys